event as horrific and senseless as the brutal murder of a child happened in our society, it is human nature to try to make some sort of sense of what the human mind is incapable of fathoming, to try to put the pieces together and evaluate what is in front of us. With the case of Abby and Libby, so little information is known, and what we've been told makes little to no sense at all. Speculation, rumors, and innuendo naturally begin to fill in the gaps where facts are absent. We're all guilty of this, but I must remind you, it is not a crime to speculate. However, today I want to focus on the cold hard facts about the deaths of Abby and Libby, as confirmed by official court documents and statements made by law enforcement. I'll do my best to deliver this information to you in a concise and unbiased manner so that you can come to your own conclusion based on this set of indisputable facts. So as we know, investigators have kept information about how the girls were found and specifically the crime scene itself very close to the vest until earlier this year when a federal search warrant for the property the girls were found on from March 2017 was leaked to the public by the Murder Sheet podcast. Here's what we know as fact about the crime based on the affidavit. On February 13, 2017, at approximately 1 o'clock p.m., 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German were driven by a family member to the Monon High Bridge Trail located in Delphi, Indiana. Abby and Libby were walking the trail in the area of County Road 300 North and 575 West at approximately 2.13 p.m., which was the last contact with the girls via cellular device. Abby and Libby were to be picked up by a family member at 3 o'clock p.m., and the victims never met with the family member. Approximately 5.30 p.m. was the last successful ping of the cellular device by AT&T. Shortly after the girls failed to show up at the designated location, Libby's family began to search the area of the trail where Abby and Libby were originally dropped off, beginning shortly after 3 p.m. The Carroll County Sheriff's Office was notified that the girls were missing at approximately 5.30 p.m., which note is the same time as the last successful ping of the cellular device. Hundreds of deputies, volunteer fire personnel, and community members came out to join the search the night of the 13th. The official search was called off by law enforcement around 1.30 a.m. However, many individuals from the community took it upon themselves to continue searching into the early hours of the morning of the 14th. When the sun came up, volunteers were told to report to the fire station where they were divided into search groups.
local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies were on scene, including the FBI, and a staging area was established. Fire personnel, dive teams, and volunteer searchers descended upon the trails to help search for the missing girls. On February 14, 2017, at approximately 12.17 p.m., Victims Liberty German and Abigail Williams were found deceased on the banks of Deer Creek, but on private property, approximately 520 feet from the southeast end of the Monon High Bridge and 1,400 feet from the residence of Ronald Logan. A large amount of blood was lost by the victims at the crime scene, though the victim's cause of death has not been released by law enforcement. Because of the nature of the victim's wounds, it is nearly certain the perpetrator of the crime would have gotten blood on his person slash clothing. The victims showed no visible signs of a struggle or a fight. It also appeared the bodies were moved and staged. Based on the affiant's training and experience, they state it is not uncommon for perpetrators of this type of crime to take a souvenir or in some fashion memorialize the crime scene by photos of electronic or digital methods that are then downloaded onto computers, storage devices, tablets, phones, iPads, or other electronic devices that store digital data for later viewing, scanning, and copying. During the processing of the crime scene, investigators located unknown fibers and unidentified hairs, which may later be used for comparison of similar fibers or hairs. It was also discovered that the panties and sock of one of the victims was missing from the crime scene. A suspect was developed of a white male, more commonly known as Bridge Guy wearing a blue jacket with a physical heavy build, wearing a cap and blue jeans. Development of this suspect was made by a 43 second video taken on Libby's phone, where the suspect follows the victims as they are walking on the Monon High Bridge Trail. Near the end of the video, it sounds as though he is directing the victims to leave the trail and enter the wooded area below. It is believed that the person in Libby's video participated in the killings. Images of the suspect were first broadcasted on the news media on February 15th as a person of interest. No person has come forward and identified himself as the person who met the victims and made the statement in Libby's video. Libby and Abby are presumed to have made contact with the unknown male at approximately 2.13 p.m. based upon analysis of Libby's phone, which recorded the video. 2.13 p.m. is also the last time of contact with Libby and Abby via cellular device. Additionally, no one involved in the search for Abby and Libby reported seeing any person matching the description of the male on the bridge.